Hey, so are you considering moving to the St. Petersburg area? Well, congratulations, it's a wonderful place to live, but there's a few things that you need to keep in mind and things you need to avoid before purchasing a home in St. Petersburg, Florida. So I really wanted to tackle that with you today. And some of the reasons for that is because St. Petersburg is its own unique blend of beautiful, surrounded by beautiful water, amazing architecture, and so much culture and diversity. But some of the homes have been around a really long time, like early 1900s, some of them even the late 1800s. So with those homes come some problems to look out for. So I really want to educate you today on some things so that I can help make you a better buyer in the process. And you know, you won't have to sweat it so much. So let's get after it right now. So a couple of things that I notice when I'm talking to my buyers in the process of purchasing in St. Pete, there's some things you really do need to consider. And I hope that you'll get a pen and paper and write these down because I think they're pretty good. Number five mistake people should try to avoid when moving to the St. Petersburg area not researching the neighborhood you guys it's so hard to explain how unique and eclectic and cool saint pete is and there's some parts that aren't so cool and you're going to find that out for yourself but the only way to do that is for you to come in town drive around i i preach this all day long i've been working with a lot of people through youtube um, especially with my relocation clients about saint petersburg and it's super hard to explain like i get emails or text messages is this a good area is this a good area well it could be a good area to me but it might not be a good area area to you. What constitutes a good area is subjective. So you need to come visit, come get an Airbnb, you know, absorb yourself into the community, ride the sun runner, go down to the pier, have dinner with a water view. What are you going to do in your daily life? Go find the, the mall and the shops that you like a lot. Stick around the neighborhoods where there's certain houses that you may have seen on Zillow or on my site that you like. Go hang out in those neighborhoods. Go see what you like. You have to do your research on the areas. I can't help you understand what's going to fit your lifestyle. Only you can do that. And no agent can really help you with that. So keep that in mind. Very different very different areas, lots of different little suburbs and boroughs within St. Pete that have been growing and developing over the decade. And so you're really gonna have to come drive it for yourself. Oh, and I forgot, if you're new to my channel, I'm Emily. I'm a licensed real estate agent in Florida and I live in the Tampa St. Pete area and I service the Central West Coast of Florida. So if you have some real estate needs, I would love to help you out. My links are below. Moving on, mistake number four, overlooking the inspection and not having one at all. Big, big, big mistake. There's two ways to play this when you are a buyer looking to get your offer to the top of the list. Contingencies. They always want you to waive contingencies. Now, if you're the type of person that ha has the means to repair things easily and effortlessly, if you're not looking for something that needs a new roof or a new AC, but there's some little things here and there that you don't mind fixing out of your own pocket, I say waive the inspection contingency. Now, that does not mean waive the inspection. We're still having an inspection. We're still getting that four point because you're gonna have to have the four point and one mitigation inspection for your insurance. So we're not waiving that. We're just waiving the contingency. So talk to me about that if you're curious. Comment below if you want a little bit more information on that because that is a strategy we've been doing. But you have to understand the homes in St. Pete are old and most of them you know, are still old and they might have been put together, you know, with a band aid here and there. So you want to know what you're getting into and you want to make sure always what is the age of the roof? If it's 10 years or older, it's going to be really expensive to insure. How old is the HVAC and the AC unit? Because you're going to be running it year round like we are right now. It's the height of summer and everybody I know's AC is going out. Also, what's the condition of the water heater? I personally think people should put tankless water heaters in. They're not that expensive and they eliminate a lot of space, especially in some of these older, smaller homes within St. Pete. So again, a licensed inspector is going to be able to tell you what you cannot see that is wrong with the home. And then you have to determine if you're willing to take on that expense yourself. That means you're going to waive the contingency. If you're not going to waive the contingency, then we've got to see if the sellers are willing to make those repairs. But we'll get to that. All right, let's just move on. Mistake number three. Ignoring the future resale value. Okay, we get really excited when we're buying a house. 
We're thinking about all of the bells and whistles that are going into this purchase. How much money here? What's the inspection? Did the home pass the appraisal? All of those contingencies that we're waiting for because those could cost you money, right? Well, the one thing that we forget is that when we're buying a home, we want to make sure that the home is of value. And that's why the appraisal is so important. So when you're going in and making an offer, yes, you might want to go in a little high to secure the deal. But that appraisal, if you're doing a loan, is going to determine the actual value of the home. So you don't want to be cash in like 50 to 100K over that assessed value because now you're you're not moving in with any equity. So that's a real fine dance that we do. I sit down, I look at the comparative market analysis, I take a look at two different reports to kind of come up with the number that I think. And I'm gonna tell you honestly, right now in this market, I've asked my clients to just hold. You know, I'm like, this house is overpriced. I don't think, let's see if they get what they want. I bet you they'll drop the prices. Nine times out of 10, they're dropping prices right now. So. Some homes I'm gonna say, yes, we need to move. It's priced to sell and it's got everything everybody wants. We're gonna be in a com competitive market here. So let's play our strategy right. That's every so often. But right now I'm being very strategic about what home prices are actually, you know, what we're actually gonna go in at. If I think it is overvalued, we're gonna probably come in right at value. Let's see if they wanna play, okay? So again, Keep that in mind. You do not want to overpay for your home because when you're ready to sell it, you want to be cash positive, not in the negative. Keep that in mind. Not getting pre-approved by a lender. I know you're shopping on Zillow. You're looking on everything. Oh, I love that house. I love that house. I want that house. I want that house. But can you afford it? There are lots of factors that go into the pre-approval process and you need to just get that ball rolling. We need to know where your credit score is. You know, you cannot be making any major purchases between that time of your pre-approval process and closing. Do you need a car? Then maybe now is not the time to buy. So also, what does your budget look like? Everybody has a house that they love and they desire, but are you actually gonna get approved for that price? And also, just because you get approved for a price, let's say you get approved for $500,000, can you really afford the monthly payments on a $500,000 home? Or are you gonna be house poor? So. I like to sit with people and talk about their budget. I ask them to speak to my preferred lender, Chris Kidder, who I love dearly. And he really breaks that down with people. And he even does the reverse math. He'll say, where do you want your payments to land? All in. And then he reverses the math out from there. And then he looks at all of your financials and that sort of thing and helps you understand where you're going to land. Then he talks about rates because it's really important right now. We're talking about rates, 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 rates. Here's the thing. Right now is the best time to buy. And I'll tell you why. The rates are holding steady. And when rates drop, housing prices are going to go right back up and we're going to have a frenzy again. So when rates are where they are right now, you can ask your lender if you can buy down the rates. It's worth asking and it's worth the money to buy them down. See if you can buy a couple points down. If not, you could also refi the house in six months or a year when those rates drop at, let's say, they go down to five again. You can refinance. So if you are sitting playing the waiting game, you're doing yourself a disservice because you're going to be paying, as we go back to what I said earlier, you're gonna be overpaying for the home that you desire and we don't wanna put you in that situation, okay? So make sure you talk to a licensed, in the state of Florida, lender, get that ball rolling because before I even show you a home, I'm looking for that pre-approval letter. And if you're doing cash, I also wanna see proof of funds. So you're gonna to have to show your agent that because when we make an offer, we have to provide that information to show that you are a solid buyer. Okay, and the last one before my bonus, forgetting about future expenses. Everybody wants to get into this house, they're so excited, they put all this money down, and then about 90 days in, a pipe bursts, or the AC goes out, or something happens that you did not expect. That's why, again, it's very crucial when you're talking to your lender that you figure out how much, don't get rid of all of your cash. Make sure you have some reserve cash. Make sure you're planning for some future events. Also, going back to when we were talking about resale value, in a lot of these St. Petersburg homes, you're gonna have to put some money into renovations. Some of their bathrooms are not up to date. Some of the kitchens are not up to date. Every couple of years, you're gonna be wanting to invest into that property a little bit more so that 
when you are looking to sell again, you're gonna be positioned where your home is one of the top ones everybody wants to see because it's got all the latest and greatest things people are looking for. Or at least it's to the standards of today's times. You know, a lot of these homes have a little bit of revamping or a little bit of renovating and they're not over here. And so, you know, you have to decide what works for you, but make sure that you keep yourself financially solvent with a little bit of, you know, a slush fund somewhere in case the AC goes out, in case you need a new water heater, in case a pipe bursts, in case all sorts of things. Roofs, roofs are gonna probably be your biggest expense. So keep that in mind, y'all. Don't forget, you really need to prepare financially, not only just to buy the home, but to save money to maintain the home. Let's not forget about insurance, property insurance. Does the home need flood insurance? All sorts of possibilities will, will pop up. Don't forget as well, if this is going to be your primary residence, you're gonna want a homestead the, the dwelling so that you get a discount on property insurance. And you only have to do that registration once. And I can help you with that. It's a very simple process, but you're gonna wanna make sure you do that so that you get the discount. So just keep yourself in check when it comes to your budget and your cash flow. okay? Okay, my bonus. I'm sure you thought I forgot it. Know your flood zone. St. Petersburg is in a hot flood zone area. When you look on the FEMA map, you're gonna see lots of red. That doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to flood. It has the potential to flood. And there are some areas that aren't necessarily in a flood zone that could flood worse than St. Pete. We don't know, nor do we have a crystal ball about the natural disasters that are either coming or going, okay? so. Many people, and I get asked about flood zones all the time. People go, oh, I don't want to be in a flood zone. Well, guess what? You live in Florida. You're probably going to be in a flood zone, especially on the West Coast. You're, I'm on a flood zone and I've survived hurricanes and, you know, tropical storms. So what you need to really look at is, yes, look on the flood map FEMA provides so that you can map out some areas that maybe you do want to avoid. But then also it's about the elevation of the home. So it's not always about the area. It's in conjunction with the elevation of the home. So I've sold a house in Shore Acres and I was showing another house in Shore Acres. And that area, you actually cannot have the dwelling on the bottom level. It has to be on the second level because of flooding. And if you have the bottom dwelling set a certain way, you, they can give you certain discounts for that. So there's a lot of things, you know, my biggest thing I tell people is if you're worried about flood zones, call your home insurance agent and have a conversation. Give them an address somewhere of a house that you liked in St. Pete and go, can you just run numbers on this for me? What would the flood insurance yearly be for this? That way you're educated. My goal is to educate you as far as I can get you, but you have to educate yourself. This is the money you're gonna be spending every month on your insurance, your flood insurance, and your maintenance of your home. You need to know this information, but don't let it scare you. Do not let flood zones scare you. Many people live very happily in a flood zone and do just fine. Now, if we have a natural disaster, this is where we all just kind of cross our fingers and hope for the best. But again, if you've done your due diligence and if this house has ever had flooding, they have to disclose it. So don't forget those property disclosures are very important for you to read over as well and see if there's any flooding and they have to disclose anything like leaks of the roof, that sort of thing. So again, doing your due diligence, having the right agent on your side is very helpful. I am a stickler for the details. So when I'm going into a house with my clients, I'm looking for cracks, I'm looking for foundation issues, I'm seeing, was there a stain on the ceiling from uh, the roof leaking? All those things, I look at that the most, more than the bedrooms and the bathrooms, because my client, that's what they're gonna be looking for. And I'm gonna go, hey guys, I see a little crack over here. Or, hey guys, I think there's a little flooding damage over here. Or, I, I was in a house the other day, I was like, this smells like smoke. Smoke is the hardest thing to get out of houses. It sits in the wallpaper or the walls and the paint and it gets in the ducts and it's in the floors. It's, it's horrible to get rid of. People stop smoking in your houses. All in all, don't worry so much about flood zones, just educate yourself. Well, I think that does it for my top big mistakes you should avoid when buying a home in St. Petersburg, Florida. If you have any questions or comments, obviously leave them below. I read them all. They're great. Some of them make me laugh out loud, and especially those of you that live in St. Pete. And I know that you get mad when I do these videos because you don't want anybody to move there, but it's beautiful. Can't help it. And as always, if you're looking to relocate to the Tampa St. Pete market, I can't help you if you don't reach out to me. All my links are below. Go ahead, jump on my calendar link and grab some time and let's talk about about your real estate needs. And again, I appreciate you watching this content and liking it if you don't mind. And until next time, everybody, I'll see you around. Bye-bye.